So this was a weekly pop quiz eight, uh, the MCQs pop quiz. If you have any doubt, you can ask your doubts. Uh, first, anyone is having a doubt in question one? So in question one, uh, it's for a reversible reaction. For a reversible reaction in the question, which change in the condition will increase both the rate of formation and the yield at equilibrium? Means we want the equilibrium to shift towards the right hand side and we want a faster rate. Rate is affected by what? Rate is affected by temperature, surface area, pressure, uh, concentration, and so if you use high pressure, temperature, large surface area, high concentration, or we use a catalyst, then we increase the rate. These all factor increases the rate. Equilibrium, shifting of equilibrium, it can be shifted by changing the concentration. It can be changed by changing a temperature or it can be changed by changing the pressure. So these are the factors which can affect the equilibrium and five factors can affect the rate of a reaction. We want to increase both. If we decrease the temperature, so the rate will decrease. So I mean, this cannot be an answer. If we increase the temperature, the rate will increase. That's right. But what about the, because the forward reaction is exothermic. So for exothermic reaction, if we increase the temperature, the balance or equilibrium will shift towards the left-hand side. So the, the equilibrium will shift towards the left-hand side. We don't want the equilibrium to shift towards the left-hand side. We want it to be on the right-hand side. That's why it cannot be B. If we increase the pressure, increase in pressure will increase the rate. But what about the equilibrium? When you increase the pressure, equilibrium will shift towards side of less moles. So we have total four moles here, less moles of a gas and two moles here. So equilibrium will shift towards the right hand side. So in this case, both the equilibrium and the rate are increasing. Like the equilibrium is shifted towards the right hand side and rate is also increasing. What about D, increasing a surface? Whenever we use a catalyst, catalyst can only affect the rate of a reaction, but it cannot affect the position of equilibrium. Using a catalyst does not alter the equilibrium. That's why D is also incorrect. So if you use a large surface of area of a catalyst, rate definitely will increase, but it won't affect the equilibrium. Question two or three, any doubt? Question three, okay. For question three, what is the ratio of C and D is in the correctly balanced equation? So first thing, what you have to do, actually, this is a disproportionation reaction in which the same element being oxidized and reduced. So you have to separate the oxidation and the reduction half equations. So like here, MnO, the reactant, has turned into Mn plus 2. That is one change. And here each oxygen is minus 2, so 2 will be minus 4. So Mn should be plus 4. So this is a reduction half equation. What about the oxidation half equation? So the same reactant MnO2 has turned into MnO4 with a charge negative 1. This is a reduction because uh, yeah, this is this was the first was a reduction. This is oxidation half equation. As you can see, each oxygen is minus two, so two will be minus four. So Mn will be plus four. Here each oxygen is minus two, four will be minus eight, so Mn should be plus seven. So here Mn being oxidized and the first equation it was reduced. So first what we did, we separate the oxidation and the reduction half equation. Now we will balance the oxidation and reduction half equation separately. And then we will add the two equations to know the final equation, the final balance equation. So first for a redox equation, whenever we want to balance, first we start with oxygen. If we want to balance oxygen, we add water. So how many oxygen do you see there on the left hand side? There are two oxygen on the left. This Whenever you want to write, to write a redox half equation, it will come, so you set, first thing, you separate the oxidation and the reduction half. So here, 
it will come the sulfuric acid will come but no need to use that first we just separate the oxidation and reduction half now mno2 turn into mn plus 2 so if i want to balance first i have two water molecules i have to add because two oxygen so we'll add two water molecules so it will be 2 h2o So two water molecules are added. Why two water molecules are added? Because two oxygen are there. Then to balance the hydrogen, we add proton. How many protons I should add? There are two multiplied by two, four hydrogen. So I have to add four hydrogen, four protons on the other side. Then we have to balance the charge. How to balance the charge? As you see on the right hand side, the net charge is plus two. On the left hand side, the net charge is plus four. So where we should add electron, we should add electron to a side where already we have a greater charge. So here we have a plus four charge, net charge, and here we have a plus two. So where I should add electrons, I should add electrons on this side. So two electrons are added because the net charge now is plus two on the left and plus two on the right. Is it clear till this point? Anyone is having a doubt? The balancing part of the first equation. Now how to balance the second equation? The same rule you will use that you have four oxygen on the right and you have two oxygen on the left. So where you will add a proton, where you add a water molecule. So in this case, the water molecule should be added on the left hand side. So how many water molecules we will add? We will add two water molecules. Then to balance the proton, we have to, to balance the hydrogen, we add protons. So four protons I should add on the other side. And now we have to balance the charge. The net charge on the left hand side is zero because both are neutral molecules. The net charge on the right hand side that is minus one and plus four. So it is plus three. I want to make it neutral. So I should add three electrons here. So the charge is also balanced. So first what we did, we separate the oxidation and reduction half equation and we balance them separately. That is first thing. Now how to add the two equations whenever we want to add the two equation we should have the same number of electrons we want to com right, combine the equation so we have a, we should have same number of electron the first equation we have two electrons and the second equation we have three electrons so what i should do i should multiply this equation by three and i should multiply this whole equation by two so that we have a combined uh, we will have the same number of electrons so I will directly write this equation after multiplication, like when I multiply this by three. So three multiplied by four, that will make the first equation three multiplied by four, that will make 12 protons. Then three multiply by this, so this will become three MnO2. Three multiplied by two become six electrons. Then 3 multiplied by Mn plus 2 and 3 multiplied by 2 makes 6 water molecule. That is the first equation after multiplication. The second equation is multiplied by 2. So when I multiply by 2, 2 multiplied by 2, 4 water molecules on the left and 2 MnO2 gives 2 MnO4 with a charge minus 1 plus 8 protons plus 6 electron. So we multiply first equation by three and the second equation by two and then we will add the two equations when we'll add the two equations the electron will cancel with the electron so this electron cancel out with another electron so electrons are cancelled out now we have to just simplify this see here we have how many water molecules on the left hand side we have four water molecules and on the right hand side, we have six water molecules. So it means like the result because one side is four, another one side is six. So if we move this four other side, it will become two water molecules. So on this side, on the right hand side, the net resultant water molecules will be two. Because six here and four here, so six minus four will make two. When you check the proton, we have 12 protons here and we have 8 protons here. So when we move 8 protons other side 12 minus 8. So this will become 4 protons. 
3 MnO2 and 2 MnO2 will be added. So that will become 5 MnO2. And rest all of them, like example, this one is 3 Mn plus 2. And this one is 2 Mn O4 with the charge minus 1. So this is a final equation after balancing, like separating and balance. So what is MnO2? That is 5 here, according to this. What is hydrogen? That is 4 here. What is C? The, that is 3 here. What is MnO4? That is 2. And what is with, written with water? That is 2 as well. The question was, what is the ratio between C and D? So what is the ratio between C and D? So C is 3 and D is 2. So the ratio will be 3 is to 2. Is it uh, clear, this equation? So this was uh, question three. Question four, any anyone having a doubt or a question? No doubt. Question five, six, seven, any doubt? Question four. In this question, you should assume that the air contains 21% of oxygen. What is the minimum volume of an air? Ensure a complete combustion of a 10 cm cube of a butane. First, it's important to write a combustion equation. Even like it is, you have to first write the combustion equation for butane. So butane means C4 and H10. So if you burn butane and the complete combustion result in a formation of a carbon dioxide, and water. To balance the carbon, we add uh, like to four is there. So we balance by putting four with the carbon dioxide and to balance the hydrogen, we put five. Now oxygen at the last because combustion equation is carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, the order. So four multiplied by two, eight plus five, 13. If I need 13 oxygen, so I can write a fraction here. I need 13 by two oxygen. That's a balance equation between the oxygen and the butane. So we want how much air is needed. First, we'll find how much oxygen is needed. So what is the ratio between the butane and oxygen? One ratio 13 by 2. Like if there's a one mole of a butane, it needs 13 by 2 moles of oxygen. So if we have 10 cm cube of a butane, how much oxygen is needed? X. So because mole ratio and volume ratio is always same. So you can take, you cannot take the mass ratio and the mole ratio. But mole ratio and a volume ratio can be taken. So when you multiply this, this will be 13 by 2 multiplied by 10, which will be 65. So X is equal to 65. It means you need 65 cm cube of oxygen. But the question is not how, how much oxygen is needed. Question is how much air is needed. So how you work out how much air is needed. So we have the formula that the percentage of oxygen in air is a volume of oxygen divided by the volume of air into 100. So the percentage of the oxygen in air is 21%, which is already given in the question. So this value, this is 21. Volume of oxygen for this reaction is 65. Volume of air we don't know and multiplied by 100. So X will be 65 times 100 divided by 21. So 65 into 100 divided by 21, what's the answer? The final answer? So 310 cm cube. That is a volume of air which we need. Is it clear? Question 4. In question five, 
Complete combustion of a two moles of alkane produces 400 dmq of a carbon dioxide at 301 Kelvin at one exponent five Pascal the pressure. So what is the formula of alkane? The idea is that we will first find the moles of carbon dioxide and using the moles of carbon dioxide, we can work out the, the alkane. So first, how to work out the moles of a carbon dioxide and the general equation for combustion of alkane, like if it is CX and HY, and we have oxygen is there, it will give XCO2 plus Y by 2H2O. And this factor will be there. This what this will be 2x plus y by 2. Now, what we will do, we'll work out the moles of a carbon dioxide. How to work out the moles of carbon dioxide? Because we don't have the at 20, it's not 25 degree centigrade or so that we have to use a general gas equation, which is PV is equals to NRT. So using PV is equals to NRT, we are finding the moles of carbon dioxide. P is the pressure, which is 1 into 10 to the power 5. V is the volume. It is given in dmq. But we have to convert, whenever we use this equation, we have to convert volume into meter cube. So how to convert the dm cube into meter cube? What we should do? So we have to divide it by, because like decimeter to meter, you divide it by 10. But decimeter cube to meter cube, you divide it by 10 cube, which is 1000. So you divide it by 1000. No, not multiply, divide. So you divide it by 1000, so it will become 0.4 meter cube. And is what we are finding, the general gas constant is 8.31 and the temperature is 3, 301. We find the value for N, so 1 exponent 5 times 0.4 divided by 8.31 times 301. What is the value for N here? So the value of the N is equals to 16. When you simplify 15, the it is 15.99, so it is approximately 16. So means how many moles of the carbon dioxide are there? 16 moles of the carbon dioxide. And they mention when we use this value of N is coming out 16. When you simplify all like 8.31 into 301 and that will be the denominator. So value of N is 16. In the question they mention that when you have two moles of this, two moles of this alkane, how many moles of carbon dioxide? This is the volume of a carbon dioxide, but how many moles of carbon dioxide is there? 16 moles of carbon dioxide. So if one mole of this compound is used, how many moles of carbon dioxide will be there? 8. Means what is the number with carbon dioxide? It means X is equals to 8. Because if two moles are producing 16 moles of carbon dioxide, it means one mole will produce 8 moles. So 8 is written with carbon dioxide. If 8 is with carbon dioxide, how many carbon atoms should be there in this alkane? There should be 8 carbon atoms. So that's why A will be the right answer. Is it uh, clear? How we worked out the number of C? They can also ask to find why, then if they ask to find the why, they will mention another thing, like they will mention how much volume has reduced. So because if we know the number of the carbon from number of a carbon directly, we can find the number of hydrogen. Is it uh, clear? Question five. Question six or seven, any doubt? 
question six or seven question seven in question seven first thing you have to write a balance equation magnesium nitrate decomposes when heated to give a white solid so it will be a magnesium oxide a mixture of a gases one of the gas release is oxide of a nitrogen it gives an oxide of a nitrogen nitrogen dioxide 7.4 grams of a magnesium nitrate is heated until no more reaction happen or occur what is the mass of x so how you can work out first write a balance equation for a thermal decomposition of a magnesium nitrate when a metal nitrate is heated is from calcium till copper it will give metal oxide so magnesium oxide plus nitrogen dioxide the brown gas plus oxygen then the equation must be balanced so for the group two elements this is always a balanced equation for a combustion of uh, for a thermal decomposition of nitrates so magnesium nitrate decomposed to give magnesium oxide plus nitrogen dioxide plus oxygen in the question we have 7.4 grams of anhydrous magnesium nitrate we want to find how much mass of this x is produced because that, that is given in the question one of the gas release is an oxide of a nitrogen x so we want how much x is produced so first from the mass we will find the moles of magnesium nitrate so moles equal mass in gram over molar mass molar mass of a magnesium nitrate magnesium is 24 plus nitrogen is 16 multiplied by uh, sorry nitrogen is 14 multiplied by 2 and oxygen is 16 multiplied by 6 why multiplied by 6 because this 3 multiplied by 2 makes 6 and this 2 is with nitrogen so 7.4 divided by total mass the molar mass we get the moles how much is this the moles 7.4 divided by this okay it is 0 0.05 so we got 0. Point... So 0 0.05. So the ratio is 2 is to 4 between the magnesium nitrate and nitrogen dioxide or 1 is to 2. So if you have 0 0.05 moles, this will be x cross multiply. When you cross multiply 4 into 0 0.05 divided by 2. So So we got 0 0.01, the 0 0.1. So how many moles we got? We got 0 0.1, but the question is not the moles. The question is how much mass is there? So we have the formula moles equal mass in gram divided by the molar mass. The moles are 0 0.1, the mass in gram is unknown and the molar mass of nitrogen dioxide you have to again use a periodic table. So nitrogen is 14 and oxygen is 16 times 2. So 32 plus 14 makes 46. So this denominator will be 46. 46 is divided, other side will be multiplied. So when 46 is multiplied by 0.1, it will become Is it uh, clear? Question 7? Question 8, 9, any doubt? How I got 46? It's because you need the moles of... You need the mass of a nitrogen dioxide, the molar mass of a nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen is 14 in the periodic table and oxygen is 16 times 2. So 14 plus 16 times 2, that will make 46. Because we are finding the mass of a nitrogen dioxide. So we have to use the molar mass of a nitrogen dioxide. Question 8, any doubt? 8, 9, 10. Any doubt? Question 8, 9, 10. Question 11, 12, 13, 14. Question 14. Okay. In question 14, the molecular formula of 
phosphorus 5 oxide is P4O10. What is the percentage by mass of a phosphorus in this oxide? So if you need the percentage of the phosphorus, it will be the mass of the phosphorus in the oxide divided by the mass of a compound into 100. So mass of phosphorus in this compound is how much? It's one phosphorus is 31. But what is the total number of phosphorus? Four. So 31 times four divided by the mass of a compound. So it will be 31 times four plus oxygen is 16 times 10 and into 100. So that will give us a percentage of the phosphorus in this compound. So whenever you need the percentage composition of an element in a compound, it's a mass of element in a compound divided by total mass of a compound into 100. So it will be 43.7% phosphorus. This was a pop quiz uh, 8, the MCQ's pop quiz 8. No one, no doubt, no, like, is it clear? All the doubts from 1 to 14? Okay. Then we have the structure pop quiz. 